Hello guys, it's Jordan Bezo or Vizoya here, whichever you want to call me. Or anything else that you want to call me, dickhead is popular amongst my friends. Um, today I am just going through the next episode of Managing the Magpie. So we're going to jump straight into it, have a little look at what we've done over the last month or two months realistically. Uh, November was a short one. Um, and, and kind of go from there. There, there are a few things uh, that I'm going to cover in this video. Uh, namely the signings that we're going to make in January. I've already uh, shored them up and hopefully they'll uh, they'll do big things for the club. But what we're going to do first is have a little look on what we've done uh, over the past few months. So we ended here at, at Preston and as, as you can see we've only lost one game since then which isn't, isn't bad. Um, but we are getting a lot of draws in which is which isn't ideal. We, we need to be winning those games realistically. We started off here against Cardiff uh, which we won fairly comfortably 2-0 Paul Dummett got on the on the score sheet I know uh, and also Dwight Gale got on the score sheet once again as Dwight Gale does uh, we dominated that game it was fairly easy next we move on to Leeds uh, this was a very close game and the, I think the scoreline was probably um, a fair one drawing one all with with Leeds um, yeah, I mean it was it was a close game. Realistically, uh, we went one up. They pulled one back straight away, and it just it never really looked like any you know being anything other than a draw. The next game was against Blackburn. Uh, we started <laughs> very quickly in this game. Matt Ritchie got an early goal, first minute goal. Uh, we dominated the game, to be honest with you, um, and again just failed to put away our chances. And it's uh, the story of my life at the moment. Dwight Gale didn't have a great game. Jose Perez was man of the match, but as you can see by the ratings there, nobody really did anything special in this game. It was a fairly boring one. We, we probably should have won on you know uh, on balance, but we didn't get another draw. Uh, moving past that, we played Nottingham Forest, um, and we won 2-0. This was actually a really close game, which really could have gone either way. We managed to nick the result. Uh, Anita and Richie both scored. They, they were both at pillars to be honest with you, great finishes. Uh, so, yeah, can't really complain. We've, we've done well so far. Then we played Birmingham. This is a game that annoyed me. Birmingham at the time, 23rd in the league. Uh, probably somewhere around it now. 22nd now. Um, we absolutely walked all over them. And they just scored two. I'll show you the goals really very quickly. Uh, actually, let me slow it down first of all for you. Uh, the goals were just... Look at that. It's just ridiculous. From that sort of distance, what an outrage! Uh, and then you got Dave Cotterill who scores a free kick. So basically, the both both goals they scored were sensational goals. There's not not much you can do about that, to be honest with you. Uh, we did end up losing that one two one, and then we moved on to Wigan. This was a, a weird weird game. Uh, Jose Perez grabbed a hat trick in this. Dwight Gale, Lascelles, and Atsi scored as well. Will Grigg on fire for Wigan, as you can see, scoring two goals there. Alex Gilby and Adam Lafondra. Uh, we, <laughs> on a, this is a nuts game. We we absolutely annihilated them. Uh, walked all over them. Dominated possession. Had 32 shots um, and scored six. So you know I can't really complain too much. But we've let four in, which is a bit of a worry considering how much we dominated this game. Defensively, just it it isn't working at the moment, and something needs to uh, to change there. And that will come in January, as uh, as you'll see. Then we played Burton. Uh, Burton were like 17th, 19th in the league at the time. Again, another game we dominated. Failed to, to make our chances pay. Didn't really do anything remarkable inside the area. Didn't get too many shots on target. On balance, probably quite quite fair. But overall, we, we probably should have won that match. And then finally, Sheffield Wednesday. Now, this was actually a very close game. Um, and I... The scoreline is is definitely flattering us a little bit because we we didn't deserve to win by three goals. We definitely didn't deserve um, the score five out of you know seven. Well, I, I suppose we did because we did. But Dwight Gale again, player of the match, scored two goals, got two assists. Atsu scored two. Uh, Perez, Richie, all all in there as well. Um, Mitrovic has been playing a little bit more, not not a whole lot more. I'm trying to train him to be a complete forward at the moment, but at the moment, Dwight Gale, as you can see, still in form, still doing remarkable stuff. Now, in this game, we've got Nottingham Forest again, the, the team we beat 2-0 away from home. So hopefully, 
at St. James's Park, we will be able to put them to, to bed very quickly, hopefully. Uh, so let's see what we can do here. Anita's out injured at the moment, so we're going to bring in... I guess we've got to bring in John Josh Shelby. So that's absolutely fine. We'll bring uh, you there. Mm. And we'll put the, uh, okay, so we're going to start with this team, I think. Uh, DeAndre Yedlin's actually been doing quite well down that side for us. The only problem I have with it is at the moment he, he's a little bit too attacking. I'd like to, uh, to shore up that side a little bit and make it a bit more defensive, but... Uh, it is what it is at the moment. He's, he's bombing forward. He has had quite a few assists for us as well of late. I can't really complain too much about his uh, his involvement. Um, but let's see how we get on in the game, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Right then, kick off time. Let's see if we can do anything in this game. Hopefully, we're going to win this quite comfortably. Okay, so half time, and nothing has happened at all. No chances in the game whatsoever. The only thing that has happened is Matt Rich has picked up a little bit of a knock. Um, he's going to stay on for now because I think it's just a facial or head injury. So, yeah, he'll be fine. It's whatever, in it? Um, I'm far from pleased with what I just saw from this team. And let's kick on in the second half, hopefully. That was not a very good performance uh, in the first half. We dominated possession, but nothing really happened. Right, so we're going to bring on Alexander Mitrovic as a substitute because Dwight Gale's just not gotten going, got going at all in this game. Um, I think that's all we'll do for now. Maybe bring Bashilia on for... Yeah, let's bring Bashilia on. He hasn't played in a little while, so we'll bring Bashilia on as well and hopefully he can prove us, you know, try and, try and uh, earn himself a spot in the first team. Okay, so the first chance of the entire game comes in the 87th minute. Uh, Atsu's taking the ball down the wing. It started from the free kick. Lansbury's picked it up for Nottingham Forest. Likai has given that away to Teote. Matt Ritchie's got the ball. He's given it to Shelby. Bashilia. can he feed it to Atsu? He has, and it's saved by Stojkovic. Uh, the scoreline stays 0-0. 87 minutes for that chance and still no goal. I feel like this one might go down to, uh, to a draw. Okay, so game over. It ended nil nil. Nothing really, really happened in the game. To be honest with you, that's one of the uh, the slowest games I've seen on uh, on this year's Football Manager. Not a single chance throughout the entire game. I suppose it's got to happen at some point, um, but that was not not good enough, really. A nil nil draw, still unbeaten, and we kept the clean sheet, which is a positive because we definitely need that. We're currently in seventh place in the league, six points behind Ipswich in first. Um, I, I definitely feel like we still we're still amongst these <coughs> this top three. I think we're going to be able to uh, to challenge for the league. So as you can see, Iose Perez, Christian Atsu and Jamal Lasalle all got on the player of the month uh, sheet, I suppose. Um, Iose Perez having a great, great month. So our players have done well this 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 month. We, we you know we've started to play very good football, and I'm I'm, I'm positive going forward. Let's get into uh, into the the transfer window. You might have already seen the players that we're signing: Matthew Target and uh, Nathaniel Chalaber have both signed for Newcastle United. Uh, I'm very pleased with these signings. Uh, I'll go through how much they were in a moment. Uh, but Chalaber may not be or you know already uh, good enough to, to get into our team. He probably will play uh, ahead of Teote. Um, and Diame isn't playing anyway at the moment. I didn't even realise he was rated as highly as he is. Um, but he doesn't have you know he doesn't play the type of football that we need him to play. 
Kyoto is looking to leave and he's coming towards the end of his contract so I'm going to try and get rid of him this January. Um, well, we won't get much for him but we'll get him off the uh, the way sheet early and we'll we'll be able to get Ch Chalaba playing um, sooner rather than later. Obviously he's a leading player at the moment. As for how much we signed, signed him for, he only cost us 3.5 million which is why I'm very happy with that signing. Hopefully he'll become um, a, you know, a, a big part of this Newcastle team. And then obviously Matt of Target. If you played Football Manager for a while, you know about this guy. You know that he has the potential to be a very, very, very good left back. He did cost us 10 million, uh, which isn't the, the type of money I'd like to be spending. But at the same time, he is a young English left back who I think will um, will definitely add a lot to this team. Uh, he has the potential to be brilliant as well. He's already better than Paul Dummett as well, and, he, and he's only 21 years old, so I can't really complain too much. Um, he so, so how our team is going to sort of shape up now, we'll quickly change that. So Paul Dummett is definitely going to be uh, swapped straight out for Matty Target. And I've just lost Dummett. Where's he gone? Uh, there he is. So he can go in for... Yeah, for Gamers. And then... Chalabert, I think, is going to go straight into the team as well here. But we're going to play him as the deep line playmaker as he is. That he is. Um, I like having a deep line playmaker, but none of the players that I had really fit that role. So this is generally what I play. I'll play a defensive deep line playmaker. Jack Wilshire probably being the best example that I've ever had in that position. Just does so well. Um, but yeah, I think that's how our team is going to, going to shape up going forward now. Uh, we're going to have him on probably on fullback. Uh, no, we'll, we'll keep him on wing, wing back and defend, I think, because we do want him to be quite defensive. He will be able to get forward and, and get those uh, those assists, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm very happy with the uh, the signings that we've made. We don't have a lot of money left over now. We only have three million, um, and we are spending just over the wage budget. But we'll be looking to to ship off some players, namely Cheke Czech Tayote and Mohamed Diame, and I believe. Uh, Lazar wants to leave as well, so we'll also be trying to get rid of him uh, in this window because he's not—he's just not fitting into our team. Um, going forward, in regards to the signings, I have a short list of players now that I'm looking at, um, keeping an eye on. Uh, if I can go to that very quickly, okay. So uh, the main players that I'm—I'm I'm hoping to sign in the summer are going to be Ruben Garcia. He's going to be our replacement realistically for. Um, Christian Atsu he should come in hopefully he'll come in quite cheap uh, then we have a uh, goalkeeper a few defenders defense is definitely something I want to shore up when I go up to if I get to go up to the Premier League um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens first of all but as for um, what's happening next next episode I'm gonna do a little bit differently I'm gonna go through um, each of the games in the month and I'm gonna give you highlights to every single game um, just because I, I want there to be a little bit more content in these videos rather than me just talking about stuff that's already happened um, I feel like it will be a little bit more fun, a little bit more enjoyable if you can see it happening live with me um, but that's all for this video uh, thank you guys for watching, if you did enjoy it um, do leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're new uh, it, it will really help us grow um, as, a, as a community and, and, and you know that's what I'm, I'm wanting to do and if you do want to watch me play other video games, um, generally I'll play things like Battlefield, Call of Duty, uh, a whole host of games realistically. You can watch that on, on uh, Twitch where I, I stream me playing those games live. Uh, I'll also be uploading a few new series going forward. I'm, I'm probably going to do a Road to Commander on Call of Duty. Um, and I'll also be doing some videos on, on other games, potentially Seven Days to Die or... Um, I'm also thinking of doing something on Overwatch, even though I'm not very good at it at the moment. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.